Mexican restaurant in St. Paul where some of the food is prepared with cactus. Cacti? Yeah, that's right. And our reporter, Chris Sanda, will inform us on a mail scheme that affects northern Minnesota viewers. Stay with us for plenty of good company. From the Twin Cities, it's good company. With your hosts, Steve Edelman and Sharon Anderson. With roving reporter Gary Lumpkin and the Good Company Company. Quite a crowd, huh? Good Great bunch. audience today. Good bunch. I'm Angela Shelley of Eyewitness News, sitting in for Sharon Anderson. And uh, this is a very familiar face I know you will recognize, sitting in for Steve Edelman. Steve and Sharon are on a working vacation, so they tell us, right. but they will be back tomorrow, so be watching for them. That's right. Well, we got some great things going on in today's show. Oh, yeah. Well, the first thing we have going on is very interesting and something that a lot of people I know are going to remember from their perhaps distant past. Who knows? Maybe it's in your distant future. Maybe it's in the near future. I don't know. But today's the day that all good college students are looking forward to. They've been looking forward to this all summer long. Now, that is the official opening day of fall classes at the University of Minnesota. Nearly 50,000 students have registered this year, and among them right now is someone who's trying to blend into the college crowd and look like one of them, our field host, Gary Lumpkin. What does it look like out there, Gary? I understand there is a new course this semester called Elementary Parking. Elementary Campus Parking. How about that? <laughs> I heard about it. We got here after the traffic jam had already subsided, but evidently the cars were just lines and people uh, in vehicles all over the campus, as well as lines in the bookstore. You know, they say college life is a life of idyllic time and so forth, but it's really tough. I mean, we're on the mall uh, of the uh, campus, right in front of the Northrop Auditorium, and where you can get away from the hubbub of classes because the pressure of college life is tough. I mean, you have eight o'clock classes, you have professors that don't understand you, and in fact, one of the words up uh, above his here says the search for truth. And of course, here we have some students that are just, you can tell that they're searching for truth at this very moment. <laughs> Looks like they're sunning to me, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is, now this is the first day of classes. Um, I, have you had any classes yet? No, well, this is my first one. I had it at 10.15. 10.15? No 8 o'clock classes? No. <laughs> are you, you're not a freshman, are you? I am, yeah. You're, now, see, we have a first here. Normally, it takes after your freshman year before you learn not to have 8 o'clock classes. Did you have advanced coaching? Well, I have one on Wednesday. Oh, you Monday, do? Monday, Wednesday, and Friday have an 8.15 class. Okay. We'll check back with this young lady next semester because I guarantee you, you won't have an 8 o'clock class. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, what are you, what's, what's your major? I'm going to major in pediatrics, nursing. In, in pediatric nursing? Yeah. Are you a freshman, sophomore, junior? Freshman. Freshman. Uh, <laughs> I know Bob is uh, standing by there. Bob, have you got a question for a freshman? A question for a freshman? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I had a very tough time uh, my first year of college as a freshman. I was sort of awed by the whole atmosphere of being on campus for the first time. It is sort of a different experience coming out of high school. I wonder how she feels about it because the University of Minnesota is one of the largest campuses in the United States. Nearly 50,000 students there. Okay, B Bob wants to know your phone number. No, that's not what he wants. <laughs> he wants to know, Bob's a happily married man, he wants to know, as being a college freshman, this is such a big campus, uh, you feel like you're lost in the shuffle even after only a couple hours? Kind of, but it's hard, it's so big. You get mixed up where you are. And stuff. So you're just gonna kinda sit around here and think it out for a while? Well, I got a map. <laughs> it's tough answering all those tough good company questions too. That's probably something they weren't counting on today, Gary. I, We're probably throwing them a good here. I don't. I don't think they. I don't think they were counting on some of the things. Now, you, uh, what? Do you have some of your textbooks in there? Sure. Okay. Now, of course, you can't be a good student without textbooks, and there have been long lines at the bookstore in addition to the parking lots that you mentioned. And here's something that you're going to want to know about uh, Angela: statistics for social data analysis. Oh, I'm very interested in that. As a matter of fact, do you know what this means? <laughs> uh, all I mean is I better read it. I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll expect a book report on Thursday. Is that okay? <laughs> one double of the space, typewritten. <laughs> double space with margins, right? Yep, exactly. Okay, now one of the other big problems, of course, on campus is what to wear. 
All right, now I tried to do the best I could. I've got uh, my sweater and my shirt, kind of preppy, but I want to get into this group right here because th if we're talking preppy right here, is this a, is this a preppy group right here? No, I don't, not <laughs> really. <laughs> now, I want, can you get a close up of this fellow because he does have, yes folks, the alligator on his sweater. <laughs> <laughs> Show your alligator, please. Okay. Now, see, I don't have an alligator, but you have answered one question in, in this group here. I never know whether to wear the collar outside the sweater or inside the sweater. <laughs> Wh which is more correct? You definitely have to wear it inside. <laughs> definitely inside. So you, see, you, you heard it first, folks, and we told you that this would be an action-packed show, and these students are certainly searching for truth. Uh, <laughs> Well, Gary, you know the key, you have to ask one of you, the key to getting through college is finding someone who can do your typing for you. That's true. Have That's they lined anybody up yet to do that, Gary? Well, as a matter of fact, do we have any typists here who want to make a few <laughs> bucks on the side? Uh, <laughs> I told you, see, they've got to start finding somebody. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bob, I missed that. Uh, I they'll have to start finding somebody. Obviously, nobody there knows how to type. N at least nobody's going to type for me, I don't think. <laughs> I think that's the problem. Okay. But that's basically it from the University of Minnesota. It is the first day of classes. It was very crowded this morning. It's a, it's a, it's a great day right now, and who knows, in a couple of weeks, this place will be vacant because everybody will be hard at work in the library studying and doing all the things that students do. And of course, they're all laughing now, but uh, <laughs> that's what's happening at the U. See you later. Bye, Gary. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's oh, that was always fun, though, when, I, when oh. I was going to college in Memphis and Memphis State University. I always enjoyed the first couple of weeks because it was so exciting and new, and you met so many new people. Getting back. Some of the professors you didn't want to meet, but I mean... <laughs> it looked like Professor Lumpkin there actually had a bigger class than many professors. Everybody was, you know, was uh, paying Good Company 101. Atten yeah, Good Company 101, right after Parking 101, yeah. uh, Campus Parking 101. <laughs> Stay with years, me. people have built up habits. They've they've grown accustomed to having professional football each and every Sunday. Well, now we don't have that professional football, and that is causing a lot of stress, not only in the lives of sportscasters like myself, but also in the lives of the husbands and wives who on Sunday had regularly scheduled plans, and now everything has been shifted. Uh, with us to talk about this subject, Dr. Marilyn Mason, a psychologist. Welcome her, please. Thank you for joining us, Marilyn. Okay. You know, if people don't think this is a real problem, they should see what happened over last Sunday when they missed the first game. In San Diego, they played a rebroadcast of an old game and called it Fantasy Football. Had about 10,000 people there. No players on the field, but they're listening to it on the radio. I think in Dallas, they did a computer readout between Dallas and the Vikings, which should have taken place last Sunday, to see who would win. Dallas won, of course. It was in Dallas. They did the same thing in Pittsburgh all over. Is there really a stress factor to people who become accustomed to a, a, an activity and all of a sudden have that activity taken away. Well, I think that that's the secret, uh, the accustom. It, it's a habit. And whenever we try to break a habit, it's difficult. People are used to having their lives a certain way. And we don't like change. We don't like change at all. So when this came along and there's a sudden big change, no, people don't like it. It is stressful. People get very crabby. It's more often, of course, men who are that much interested in, in sports. Uh, but there are women who are interested in them, too. And the, the man who suddenly has it all taken away uh, sometimes finds that the worst of it is that instead of being able to find something else to do, his wife says, well, now you've got time to do all these little chores around the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that makes it even worse. Well, I, speaking of wives, uh, uh, my wife uh, w was delighted at the fact that there was a National Football League strike because it meant that I would have Sunday off instead of going to the Viking game and doing the Bud Grant show. Uh -huh. So the stress wasn't too heavy on her, but mm -hmm. I know it's tough on me because you're right. I had to go out and cut the grass and rake <laughs> some leaves. And, but some wives who are accustomed to having their hubby away on Sunday, suddenly he's home all day. Yes, and what are we going to <laughs> what are we gonna what? do with this, this fellow? Gosh, how can I get him out of the house? I think that what the important thing is to, to think of some things that you've always wanted to do. And uh, there is a way of getting over this stress if you really concentrate on your life and think, well, this isn't that important. And instead, we think of it, what are we going to do? And we think that this terrible thing has happened to us. Instead of saying, well, wait a minute, all summer long, we somehow made it without football. And if we made it all summer long, we can make it a little bit longer. And, if, and plan some activities that are going to be fun. You say plan activities. Couldn't this be a time when perhaps uh, dad usually is away at the football game, uh, even with mom, and suddenly now they have some free time and maybe they can spend more time with the family in general? 
Well, that would be an, an excellent thing, and I, I believe that if you can do it positively and think, now I have time to do something that I want to do, it's when we force people into things that isn't so good, and that's why I would st uh, caution wives against saying, oh, well, now you have time to do all these, these chores that need to be done, because you certainly, that's not family togetherness. So that, if the, uh, if the man decides that's what he'd like to do because he feels good after getting it done, that's one thing. But to say, well, now you better do this and this and this, well, uh, you're certainly going to drive him into uh, watching reruns or something uh, you wouldn't like. Do you think that overall that uh, uh, the football widow is right now all across this country cheering the fact that there is a strike? I think that some of them are, and it, it, it's very real that there are a tremendous number of men that just spend hour after hour after hour the whole weekend in front of the television, and it does get uh, bad for the, for the family. If the family allows it to and just doesn't say, well, there he is, we're going to go do our, own, do our own thing. Now, what's going to happen when suddenly the strike is settled and you've developed these routines to compensate for not having National Football League uh, games to go to, suddenly the games are back, and suddenly you drop back in the same routine, or, or does that have to be? I, uh, I would suspect that even though we have real good intentions of keeping up doing things with the family and not watching so much, that within a few weeks, everyone will be back watching again. You know how fast we slip back into old habits. That's true. And it's going to happen. But in the meantime, we could have established at least a little bit of bond with our families and oh, seen them again. <laughs> well, what do you do for sportscasters that keep driving down to the Dome on, uh, on, on Sunday, driving around and around? There have to be some tips. <laughs> you can give all of us, including myself, to cope with this coming yeah. Sunday because it looks like we're going to be without football again this Sunday. There, what can we do? There are some things that you can do. And one of the things I would suggest doing is to list things you've always wanted to do. Because all of us have things that we've thought about doing and haven't done. If we list the things that you want to do, then you have that in your mind about, well, these are things I w might want to do. Then schedule specific activities. Don't just wake up in the morning and think, oh, my goodness, no football. What am I going to do? Uh, but way early, decide what you're going to do and do it and include others in the plans. Make this a time to get to know your family, get to know your neighbors and, and uh, maybe other relatives, and then stop talking about it. The more we talk about something negative, oh, what am I going to do, what am I going to do, the worse it seems. Instead, make your plans, have a good time. You might not even notice it nearly as much as you think. I don't mind the fact about getting to know my neighbors better, but I don't want to get to know my lawnmower any better. <laughs> Hire it done. You know, for some guys, that's going to be a real uh, stressful right. situation right. for them. Marilyn, thank you very thank much. You Maybe I'll be me. able to handle this Sunday a little better than I did I last Sunday. So. Thank you very much. Thank you We've got more coming up on Good Company in just a moment. Got a minute? Then you've got time for a hot steak sandwich. Keep steak them frozen till you're ready to eat. Then stick them in the frying pan. 60 seconds later, take them off the heat and fix them up any way you can. Try steak them on a roll with cheese. Top it any way you please. Steak them sandwich steaks. They're 100% pure beef and nothing else. Steak them for dinner. Steak them for lunch. Or any minute of the day you want to munch. Steak them. The 60 second meal. I guess I believe in the old cliche, if you're old enough to fight and die, you're old enough to drink. This is Dennis Bounds. We know that drinking and driving don't mix, but it's particularly sad when the victims of those accidents are teenagers. Some say that raising the drinking age will help stop the killing on the highway. Tonight at 10, we'll take a look at other states that have raised their drinking age, and we'll explore the arguments for and against raising it here in Minnesota. No minor tragedy. Tonight at 10 on Eyewitness News Update. Now you can save 20% during the Orchestra Hall Great Preseason Concert Sale. Great jazz. Brubank, Ella Fitzgerald, Herbie Mann. Great pops. Donnie and Marie, Shirley Jones, Robert Poulet. Great classical. Minnesota Orchestra, Ron Paul, Serpent. Great folk. In the town. Leon Redbone, Burl I. Great price. Buy any six tickets before October 1st and save 20%. SOS, this is Peggy. Yes, we provide crisis intervention, advocacy, and support counseling to victims of sexual assault and their families and friends. As a matter of fact, we're looking for volunteer advocates right now to help staff our 24-hour crisis line. Training will begin in early October. If anyone you know is interested, 
please have them call us at this number for more information. That number is 298-5898. Well, every week our good company staffers risk their diets, not to mention their waistlines, by looking into the latest, the newest restaurants in the Twin Cities area. And this week, of course, is no exception. On our restaurant review today, we're going to a brand new restaurant, a new cafe it's called, called the Mexico City Cafe. Now, this place has opened recently in the St. Paul area, and uh, we took a look at uh, what the place looks like. There it is, the exterior of the place, the Mexico City Cafe. It's at 371 Selby, as I said, in St. Paul. And it is a very, very authentic Mexican restaurant. In fact, uh, they tell me that it is one of the most authentic Mexican restaurants to ever hit the Twin Cities. Some of the dishes even are made with cactus plant, if you can believe that. The restaurant opened in April, and uh, most uh, Mexican restaurants, as you know, are, are decorated in adobe fashion. But this one is decorated very brightly. Uh, one of the first dishes we looked at is chili relino. That's uh, $4.95. It is a homemade item, and it's a very thrifty item at $4.95. It's made with poblano pepper stuffed with cheese, dipped in egg batter, and fried. Refried uh, beans and rice are served with this dish, and that's $4.95. Also a popular thing is the fiesta plate at $6.95. We peeked over the shoulder of head cook Maria chicken Rodriguez mole. as she prepared her specialty no. chicken mole. This is the city cafe. I prepared the sauce with um, different spices, which contains um, chile ancho, chocolate mexicano, and ajonjoli. And to you, it's sesame seed. <laughs> okay, what I did here is I cooked a piece of chicken. It's boiled, it's spiced, and I'm going to add it to the chicken mole sauce. I'm going to cover it with the sauce. And what I usually do is leave it simmer for about two, three minutes. Now I'm going to put it on the dish. And I have arroz and frijoles refritos, refried beans and Spanish rice. We asked restaurant owner Ted Guzman why his restaurant is different from other Mexican restaurants, and this is what he had to say. We are offering foods here at this restaurant that you will absolutely not be able to find anywhere else unless you're invited to a, perhaps a Mexican home. But there is no restaurant selling some of the things we have here. And of course, we also talked to some of the customers and asked them what they thought about the restaurant and the yes, food they I had there. Yes, I think this restaurant is one of the finest restaurants in the Twin City area. And I'd have to qualify that by saying that I spent 14 years in Mexico living there. I think the food in here is probably the most authentic food that you'll find in the whole Twin City area. I like it a lot. I think it has a nice atmosphere. It's pleasant to be here and I think the food is great. Uh, this evening we had nachos and we had a dinner platter which had an enchilada, a taco and beans. And as usual the food was very good and we enjoyed it a great deal. No, this isn't another one of the enjoyable edible dishes at the Mexico City Cafe, but it is a part of the enjoyable decor of uh, what sounds like a very good, authentic place to eat. It really does. I love Mexican and food. And I, I know guess, uh, you love Mexican yeah. food. Excuse and, uh, me just for a moment. I was going to say, Bob. <laughs> I think... We have some of the dishes. Uh, Bob had something to do we, uh, with this, I know. Normally, I know Steve and Sharon get to go to the uh, restaurant and, and sample some of the food and... You and I didn't get to go, so we had them bring the food here because we wanted to make sure that it was good food. Mm -hmm. So let's, you know, yeah, we'll well, take a uh, test. I'll take, I think this is the Fiesta plate this? here. And That's the uh, 695 Fiesta plate. And, Excuse uh, us just for a moment. Yeah, yeah. we'll be right with you. <laughs> mm. Very good. Mm -hmm. I said it. You want some? No. <laughs> Isn't this a little unorthodox, Bob? Yes, uh, it's the first time I've ever this? eaten on TV, believe me. I'm awfully nervous about that. I don't think you're supposed to, supposed well, to be doing that. It's good. Mexico City Cafe. Oh, it is One authentic. thing I noticed about this, of all the Mexican restaurants, 
it, they have different uh -huh. types of dishes. It's not like the normal bill of fare. It looks to me like they have some different type, new type Mexican dishes, and not the kind of just pop in the microwave frozen things. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's a good thing about it. Yeah, awfully good. And a little hot, too. And I think they rate it according to spiciness as well. So if hotter you want to know, the hotter the better. Boy, you really like hotter your Mexican better. food, don't you? <laughs> well, another segment on the show right now is our people segment. And every week, the good company cameras go out on the street and ask frivolous questions to which they get frivolous answers, as you might expect. But today, I thought it might be fun for a change to turn the cameras on my colleagues in the eyewitness newsroom. And one of my colleagues in the eyewitness newsroom <laughs> happens to be this guy. And I asked them the interesting question, what would you be if you weren't a television newscaster? That's a pretty good question. And here are some of the surprising answers well, I got. Well, I think I'd still be in some kind of communications field. I think I would be an interpreter, a French interpreter. I would like to work at the United Nations. What would I be? I would probably be a rock star. That's what I started out to be when I was a teenager, but somehow I never made it. Um, living on the beach in California, making records, sounds like a lot of fun to me. Maybe a baseball umpire. I think that's what I like to do. If I could not do this. A professional baseball player. That or an astronaut. No question about it. That's the easiest question you've asked. Probably a disco dance instructor. I think uh, I've always sort of wanted to do that. I love to get out on the floor and teach young ladies how to disco dance. That's, that's probably what I'd be. I think possibly a brain surgeon. I really uh, uh, had a great interest in that as a young child and uh, experimented with uh, playmates. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I was going to go into it, but then I found out that uh, there was uh, uh, more money to be made at an earlier age in TV, so I decided to, uh, to give it up. But it was quite disappointing. <laughs> now, these are people that have the serious business of bringing you the news each and every night. And as you can tell, they are serious about their job. Isn't yeah. it comforting to know <laughs> that Byron Barnett wants to be a rock star? I mean, isn't that something you always wanted to know? Will you pardon me, too, if the line doesn't form on the left? to have some of your brain surgery. I hope you'll right. understand. Well, you know, I would go know. to Michael hey, Breen. You, know, you, you never know. I mean, you never know when this job is going to you know, fold up, and you gotta, you got to be prepared to fall back you on you got to be ready with a second career. But it was fun to, to ask that question of the eyewitness news team, because so often I hear my colleagues say, I can't imagine what I would do if I weren't in this business. And I can't imagine what I would do either, except I think I'd go to break. Stay with us. <laughs> You know, we're enjoying pork a lot more often since we got the full pork nutrition story. Excuse me, gotta go. No kidding, pork is loaded with protein and most B vitamins. It's lean and easily digested, and it's not high in cholesterol. How do I know? Well, I guess you could say, health is my bag. America, you're leaning on pork. On the next episode of More Real People, we'll take you to Philadelphia to meet a consumer advocate who's got a flair for the dramatic. Meet a millionaire who literally throws his money away. And I'm doing my thing, my own way, as I please. And we'll see a Manhattan attorney who coaches a girls track team in Bedford-Stuyvesant. He's very special, he's different, really. Real People, Tuesday at 4.30 on Channel 5. Come on along this fall for great weeks of great late movies. Most Wanted Week. Broken Heart Week. Real Man Week. Real Woman Week. Real Man Meets Real Woman Week. Halloween Horrors Week. Catherine Hepburn Week. Come on along for five great nights of great late movies beginning this fall on Channel 5. Hem Clinic is a mental health agency providing a variety of psychotherapy services for Twin City residents. Services are affordable because Hem Foundation underwrites 70% of the budget. The clinic has relocated two blocks north of the state capitol. We are celebrating with an open house on Wednesday, September 29th from 3 to 7 p.m. Everyone interested in mental health is cordially invited. For further information, call the clinic at 224-0614.
If you're a college student or the parent of one, then you know the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat as far as college entrance exams are concerned. That number next to your name can either make or break your admission to certain colleges. My guest today is someone who knows a lot about that. In fact, his name is synonymous with educational testing and educational preparation. Won't you join me in welcoming Stanley Kaplan? Stanley Kaplan schools, as you probably know, are in many, many cities all across the country. And the purpose of your testing centers, your educational preparation centers, is to get people ready for these tests. Right. Now, which tests primarily are we talking about that can make or break your, your well, entrance actually, to certain uh, schools? First of all, this make and break is not a definitive thing. I would say the grade point average can make or break. There are many things that can make or break. So labeling the SAT is the most important thing in your life. I think is uh, an anxiety-provoking uh, uh, statement, and I don't think it's so. But the LSAT to get into law school, the uh, MCAT to get into medical school, I think these are more significant tests because uh, the requirements for get into, getting into college today, unless it's for the very, very competitive schools, such as the Harvards, the Yales, the Carltons, except for those schools, it's rather easy to get into college mm. as far as the SAT is concerned. We should say, first of all, too, that the SAT is the Scholastic Aptitude right, Test because right. some people probably don't know what that test right. is if you're not uh, getting into college. And uh, I would like to call it the Scholastic Assessment Test because it's not an aptitude test for what most people think is aptitude. People think of aptitude as something that's innate, either you have it or you don't. It's an achievement test based on what you learned inside of school and outside of school. Do you think the tests are fair? Uh, in most cases, yes. As, as fair as grade point average as fair as tests in school. Uh, I think it would be a lot fair, it would be much more unfair if they didn't have the test because different schools have different kinds of standards. And you could have a grade point average close to an A and it can be a re actually another school, a grade point average of a C. So therefore, this is a common denominator throughout the country. Also, most schools uh, give marks based upon memory. In other words, the teacher gives you material, you memorize, regurgitate it, then for, promptly forget it. The SAT uh, tests your ability to reason things out as well as just what you've memorized. How much can one uh, increase their grade, their uh, score on these tests if they study? Well, Either your school you know, or anyone's well, school. Well, one of our students of uh, happened to be on uh, uh, the 20 minutes of ABC about a, uh, a year and a half ago, and she was on, she went, uh, she went up almost 600 points. Oh, my. That's a big... Uh, and there are only 800 points no, no, on the test. No, no, there were 1,600. 1,600 800, on this particular... Well, a total of uh, 600 points. Okay. Now, of course, I'm not going around saying you're going to be able to go up 600 points. Our average improvement has been about 100 points, a little over. But, of course, you can have somebody going up zero and somebody else going up 200. The problem is, that's why I don't like to quote statistics, because the person who went up zero doesn't want to know about that person who went up 200. He wants to know, well, what happened to that uh, 100 points you promised me? We're not promising anything. Well, we do happen to have a couple of people in the audience who know firsthand how much their scores can be raised on that particular test. Bob, why don't you go to those folks right now? That's right, Angela. We have a parent and a student uh, who took part in the program, Daryl Ladden and his mother, Mrs. Ladden. And Daryl had a 100-point increase by taking the Kaplan classes. And, and Daryl, first, when you took it the first time, uh, did you take it one time and then not do too well and then decide to take the course? I took the PSATs and didn't do as well as I would have liked, so I decided to take the course, and that helped a great deal on the SAT. What really helped you imp improve that much? 100 points, that's an awful big improvement. Well, you study. I, took the, I did the tapes, uh, not the cl actual classroom. And you're hearing material so much, and if you study it, they give you booklets uh, that can really help. As a parent, what prompted you to make a decision uh, after he had some problems with the test to, to move on and, and try a, a different approach? Well, we thought that we knew that he could do better, and we felt that he needed some um, uh, program to help him study and this worked out for him very well we were very pleased with it and we knew that he wanted to apply to some top colleges so we were very pleased with the results that he has do you feel yeah you know, the knowledge was always there it was just how to take the test yeah. yeah that makes a big difference because a lot of people are very smart but the test that makes them nervous and so they won't do very well on it but if you get a lot of practice you'll be confident when you go in and take the test I have a question Angel I'm just wondering uh, a lot of times do real intelligent students, people who have the knowledge, simply freeze up 
because they put so much importance on that test and, and they, they wind up having difficulty. That happens very frequently. And I always tell my students that uh, you're going to be uptight, but if you give yourself enough practice, most of the uptightness comes from the fact of the fear, the great unknown. And if you familiarize yourself, the great unknown disappears. And once it disappears, you do much better. So we've had many students who are very intelligent, but simply uh, blanked out as far as the test was concerned. Can you perhaps not study at all for this test, not open a single book, and still make an excellent score? Is that possible? Yes, many of my teachers never opened a single book, and they had 800 in math and 750 in the verbal. Mm -hmm. Some people are, they're, they, you say, didn't open a book. They were opening up books all the time. They were always reading. Now, students ask me all the time, when do I start studying for the SAT? I say two years ago, <laughs> because reading is very important. So these people are natural studiers. And, and that is, in fact, one of the tips that you give people. That's right. Mm -hmm. And we have some of those tips for you right now in case you are contemplating taking that perhaps not all important but very important test. And uh, why don't you tell us what those are, Mr. Kaplan? Right. Well, uh, the exam format. Uh, since 1979, the Educational Testing Service and the College Board produced a booklet called Taking the SAT. And this is a full, full copy of the SAT, just as it was given with a lot of helpful hints and certainly everybody should go through and take that practice examination. Okay, those are the tips. Certainly study the exam format, yeah. pace yourself, don't make wild guesses, and, uh, but you should make some guesses, should you not? Right, absolutely. If you can don't eliminate leave one, blank. if you can eliminate, oh, I wouldn't say that. No? If the whole thing is one blob, leave it blank. But if you can eliminate one choice you know is wrong, then it pays to guess among the others. Okay, some very good tips for taking the SAT. Right. Stanley Kaplan. We'll be right back in just a moment. <laughs> Look at this stuff. Some cereal. It's supposed to be good for you. Did you try it? I'm not going to try it. You try it. I'm not going to try it. Let's get Mikey. Yeah. He won't need it. He hates everything. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. There are two kinds of life cereals to please all kinds of kids. Regular life and cinnamon life. Make life cereals part of your nutritious breakfast. There's a radio station in the Twin Cities that's been putting dents in KS-95. Berglund, why are we doing this? Not only are Heinz and Berglund making a real impression on listeners, after their morning show, you'll hear ten records in a row every hour. We look silly. So don't miss this dashing, dynamic duo that is Breakthrough Radio. Heinz and Berglund, mornings on Music Radio 99.5 FM, WLOL. Entertainment Tonight, we've got the inside stories. Next, Barbara Mandrell. She's got it all, a great family and a great career. All of these things are a labor of love. And she's not about to quit. I'm breaking a lot of records and I want to break more. Then, Tom Selleck. Has success changed him? Change in me, it's a change in the way the people around me either perceive me or, or, or treat me now. Just two of the personal stories on the next Entertainment Tonight. Tuesday at 6.30 on Channel 5. What is an unmuseum? Try the Science Museum of Minnesota on its 75th anniversary. It's unforgettable, unstuffy, unboring, undefinable, ungloomy, unmatched, unpredictable, and undeniably unusual. With its Omni Theater, the Science Museum of Minnesota, an unmuseum. Janie Jason is a name that may not mean a lot to you, but when you finish watching this tape, perhaps you'll know a lot more about Janie Jason, and you might even recognize yourself or someone you know. Janie Jason is someone that many women have a lot in common with. Jason is the only child of a self-made millionaire whose get-ahead ethics made her a real achiever as a child. She fulfilled her storybook fantasy by marrying her high school sweetheart, having three children, and living in a beautiful 18-room home. Despite this seemingly perfect life, things were not all roses for Janie. 
personal problems drove her to food, and she soon weighed 250 pounds. In her weight struggle, Janie became addicted to diet pills and later developed a drinking problem. In an effort to gain control of her life, Janie first ran counterweight programs for General Mills and later assertiveness training classes. But it was not until she underwent a rehabilitation program that Janie was finally able to kick her addictions. Free at last, her public speaking engagements began to reflect her new positive outlook on life. Today, Janie lives in a more modest home, working hard to share her philosophy of caring. Creativity No Limits, this is Mary speaking. Creativity No Limits is the organization Janie founded, based on her belief that everyone needs recognition and affirmation. From an office in her home, Janie works with her secretary, Mary, to schedule seminars. She designs each event to meet the needs of the group, whether they be teenagers, women in prison, or senior citizens. Tonight's event much. will be a family happening. Um, Mary, it, now, I'm ready to go tonight, so this is families tonight, right? Mm-hmm. And I have... It's a community event. Okay, how many people are they expecting? They're expecting two to three hundred. Okay, now I need to go over with you what's tomorrow, because I don't remember. Okay. And... Tomorrow in the morning, you're going to be at Kimball High School for the high school assembly. Okay. Now, that's FHA students, and so that's on self-esteem. Right. Um, we have a stress coping seminar coming up, and where is that? Okay. That's the... To me, nothing made any sense in my life until I understood that feeling affirmed was the basis of being the best person that you were put on this earth to be. So I built everything around that. Getting ready for tonight's session also includes rehearsals with her partner and pianist, Frankie. Janie blends group dynamics, such as body language, with music and songs to help her audiences get into the spirit of reaching out and sharing with each other. Okay. Can you do that tonight? Sure. Okay, let's try Hey one time just to see if I can still sing. Hey, look me over, lend me your ears. Build up your attitude, loosen up your fears. Forget the hassles, put them to rest. We're going to have some fun tonight. There won't be any tests and you'll be up like a rosebud high on the vine. Pass out the compliments, I'll take my share of mine. Cause I figure whenever we're running low, the only way is up. And look out, world, here we come. Good, that'll work. Yeah. last part where you go from your knees to that last splitting part. Show Frankie how that's working out. It's very come, pretty. Come down. Janie's family will also participate in tonight's family happening. Her daughter Janet will close the session, performing gymnastics to illustrate alternative highs for young people in the audience. You know, when you're waiting there, if I forget that part about telling why you're there, uh -huh. and I forgot that, I mean, that was really dumb, and you try to remind me about that because I think it's really important that people know that you're there because you have chosen to be chemically free and this is how you get high. There's time for one last hug of reassurance and then it's off to the seminar. Janie's session tonight is at Stewartville, Minnesota. People from all walks of life have brought their children here to experience the fun of a family happening. Thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> One of the big worries that I have in life as I get ready to come out to speak to people is will I be enough? Enough for Janie means touching these people's lives tonight and giving them hope for a better tomorrow. She warms them up for the experience with some good old-fashioned self-expression. When I look at other people, whether they're in the prison, or they're in the chemical dependency groups or they're in those audiences and when I look at children when you reach out and you just pat a little child they look back at you and they just kind of light up and I see big grown-up people needing that so desperately and I don't see I don't see families giving that to each other except in rare cases and I just feel I need to go out and tell the world that it's really important to me and you hear things in families 
and chemicals never go away. 78% of the crimes committed in the state of Minnesota are committed under the influence of some chemical. 72% of all the people in prison today were battered children, incest victims, and are chemically dependent. Chemicals never go away. You need to be who you are, and we're going to try a little special something. No matter what you're feeling, it always shows on the outside. Janie introduces her son, Joe, to bring a special message of caring to the audience. If I had one wish for every man, woman, child in America, it would be that as we rode our dirt bikes through life, we would have the attitude of, if you got to know us. Maybe you'd like us. Now, I want to look you over one more time while Frankie plays the music. Would you stand up, pat all the people around you on the back, and tell them you're glad that they survived and they got here tonight. Would you do that, please? <laughs> been going around and talking about one word and it's a big word and some of you are going to forget it but it's a word that has a miracle in it and the miracle is affirmation and what it means is when you look at another person one that's in your life and you look at them with kind and gentle eyes and you begin to notice how really special they are and you begin to see them and you look at them and you say I see how really good and beautiful you are. That's when the miracle starts happening. With Janet's performance, Janie's session is complete. Her message of caring and reaching out to others has touched many people here tonight. They will carry these good feelings with them for a long, long time. Jason, a real winner in life. Janie, what made you decide? What was the one thing, or were there several things that made you decide to change your life? Well, the food uh, was something that I worked on for a long time and thought I had solved, but one day I went to a meeting called Overeaters Anonymous, and they were talking about mood swings and chemical imbalances in people's, people's lives, and I realized that I was eating less, but I was saving lots and lots of calories for cocktails. And then I did have two specific events where I was just blacked out in bad trouble with alcohol and uh, was lucky that I got home. And when I got home the next morning, I, I wanted to minimize it, but I woke up and my husband called me that morning and he said, is there anything wrong? I said, yes, I think I need help. I think I'm an alcoholic. So that was it. I said in my introduction that many people will perhaps recognize themselves or a friend in you. Do you think that is true, that many women share this problem? Now that I am okay, I find more and more people are coming to me and saying, I identify with you and I've been there and, and I'm one of you or I'm one of us. Mm -hmm. Is there any one thing that those women uh, can do to, to get over this? Is, is, does it help to perhaps to confide in someone initially or to just say, I have a problem? Well, we have loneliness as being I, what I think is the number one problem in America today. And the big thing that I could recommend for everyone, and it's not just women, in fact, it's children and adolescents and elderly, is to reach out your hand when you need help and say, I don't think I'm making it. Would someone please help me? Okay, and if someone would like Janie Jason's help, uh, you can call her. Uh, the name of her company is Creativity No Limits. The number is on the screen, 474-4058, and Janie does do seminars. If you like what you saw on the tape, perhaps you might call Janie, and she might be an inspiration to you. Thank you, Janie Jason. Thank you. More of Good Company coming up. I bet you feel good after a workout. And hungry. You're sure enjoying that Skippy peanut butter mm -hmm. sandwich. Mom says it's very nutritious. Egg salad's nutritious. So is bologna. But ounce for ounce, Skippy has more protein than egg salad, bologna, many sandwich foods, and no cholesterol. Hey, Annette, want to try the trampoline? I think I'd rather have a bite of your Skippy sandwich. <laughs> okay. When it comes to good nutrition, it's hard to beat Skippy creamy. 
and super chunk. One company still hand smocks dresses like they did in 13th century England. Back then, you scrubbed clothes in cold water at the town pump. Today, Polly Flinders has better advice. All temperature cheer. They sew it in every dress. Cheer cleans in the right temperature, down to the last <laughs> sticky stitch. So when you go back centuries for a great look, you can help keep it that way. All temperature cheer. Polly Flinders sews cheer's name in. They trust our cleaning. From border to border and coast to coast, Country Day gives you the most. The most farm fresh facts and agricultural news on AgriPort. The most home, health, consumer, food and economy tips on country living. And the most down-home faces from fascinating places all across the heart of America. From border to border and coast to coast, Country Day gives you the most. Mornings at 5.30 on KSTP-TV Channel 5. You haven't been to the Guthrie lately? Well, now's the time. Come on in. This is the room service set. Quiet right now, but... Room service is a play that sweeps you away with its goofiness. It's a play that lets you enjoy every single hilarious moment of it. An evening filled with laughter. Just what's needed for these times. Room service at the Guthrie Theater. Call today for your tickets. And just to make sure I got it right, I read in the Miami Herald that last year the same person that's behind this scheme was shut down by the postal authorities and he was doing this. He called himself the United States Bureau of Deceased Americans. He was contacting widows of veterans implying government affiliation and then he was offering to enshrine their deceased husbands in the Library of Congress for sending him $62.30. How do these things tell you the audience they're all not miked but the audience gasped when you said that yes. Chris I mean uh, is nothing sacred I guess in a way right audience is that what you feel about yes. that yes yeah, the it, audience just, is pretty astounded by this Angela it's, it's such a despicable fraud and it's such a scam and there are things that consumers can do in Minnesota as they receive these mailings and we're going to be running across the screen the name of the authority to which Minnesota consumers should write Remember that a state agency such as mine, we have a jurisdiction in our state. But I can't reach down into Florida and nab somebody. So the United States Postal Authorities are onto this, and we have that name and address, and we'd sure like consumers to contact. So you work through the postal inspector yes. to stop these sort of things yes. from coming into the state. And we have the uh, mail scam uh, address up there now. Yes, it's the United States Postal Inspector. His name is Ted Green, G-R-I-E-M, United States Postal Service. Post Office Box 520772, very long box, it in must, Miami. It must get a little frustrating for you because it seems to me that these things pop up month yes. after month after month. Is there any way to ever totally stop them? No, I think not because the, uh, there's an old adage about the fool and his money are soon parted and there are plenty of people that are out there trying to take advantage of things. But when they use logos that aren't assigned to them, Kodak and the Better Business Bureau are after them because they're using their names improperly. And they use the term United States, you know, so it implies a government agency such as myself. You just have to make sure that you keep yourself informed. Exactly right. And also, if you have any other questions, remember the Consumer Services Hotline, 296-2331. Thank you very much. That, that helps us out. And hopefully everyone, when they see that envelope, will know that this is not a good deal. We'll be back with more in good company. Thank you. now, frozen dinners had a place in every home, but it wasn't the dining room. But now there are dinner classics from Armor. Complete meals like tender sirloin tips in mushroom sauce, scalloped potatoes, and crisp Italian vegetables. Harold, tonight we're eating in the dining room. Dinner classics from Armor. Frozen dinners so good they belong in the dining room. So, this is the dining room. Walls and windows from Plywood, Minnesota. Direct from the factory to you. Beautiful Delmar window blinds, special at 40% off list. And introducing mini print wallpapers, regularly $5.42, but sale priced at $4.42 in September. And lots of these 99 cent bargains, too. Plywood, Minnesota's huge paneling inventory is priced from $2.99 a sheet. Walls and windows from Plywood, Minnesota, the value givers. Direct from the factory to you. Play Scott Towles' Match-A-Prize game. 
Collect matching game piece halves and win. Some packages even contain instant winner pieces. Prizes include new Chrysler LeBaron medallions, Sony Betamax recorders with 19-inch color TVs, Nikon 35mm camera outfits, plus thousands of other prizes. Look for Scott Tiles displays at participating stores for specially marked packages that contain game pieces and complete details. Find matching halves and be a winner in Scott Tiles Match a Prize game. Good afternoon, this is Cindy Brocato with an eyewitness news brief. The attorney for Margaret Kinsky says that he will immediately appeal. That 20-year-old co-ed was found guilty of second-degree murder in the strangulation death of her newborn infant that was yesterday. The Ramsey County jury convened today to consider evidence against a possible suspect in the Cassie Hansen murder case, and the state Supreme Court has become involved in the breathalyzer controversy. Details of all of these stories on Eyewitness News at 5. Our audience who have some special functions coming up that they want to tell us about. And as a skier, knowing that the snow is on its way, Jim Dwyer is with us from the National Ski Patrol. And I'm excited about this. This is really going to be interesting. Yes, we've taken, this is our 12th year of having a swap on over at the ski state fair, uh, at the state fairgrounds, at the Merchandise Mart. We have uh, the public bringing in their merchandise for sale if they want to take and turn it in to buy some new equipment for next year. This will be a tribute where we'll be recognizing the black graduates of the University of Minnesota. And we're having three days of activities to display this recognition program. Uh, it begins Thursday with the reception of the Riverview Supper Club featuring uh, Dr. Reginald Buckner and Frank Warden. And Friday we have an educational seminar on campus where we have a guest speaker, uh, Carl Stokes, Mayor of Cleveland. And Friday night we have a special fashion show featuring clothes from Anthony's and furs from Dr. Phil Lane. Well, it should be nice, and I think we have a phone number that we want to give as far as uh, more information, 373-7503, and that's University of Minnesota Tribute. Thank you very much, James Beard. Appreciate it. And our final little announcement here, uh, Gene Weber and Joy Gregerson from Hair Images and Beauty Salon, and uh, they have something for us. Yes, we have a gift certificate for both yourself and uh, for Angela for body wraps and sculptured nails for Angela, if she would so like. We are a full-service salon in Anoka, Minnesota, and uh, we'd really welcome you. We also would like to, being so Steve and Sharon aren't here today, we're going to also leave one here for them also. Thank you very much. I've always wanted a body wrap, and many people have told me that I've needed one. So thank you very much. And Angela, you have some coming attractions. I was going to suggest that you get a body wrap if those people hadn't come along, Bob. Well, coming up on Good Company next week, Vicki Audette is going to tell us how to have a successful garage sale. You might be interested in that when you clean out your basement this Sunday, Bob, well, since you don't watch the NFL around, games. Too. Yeah. And, of course, uh, Steve will be talking to Erin Moran in Los Angeles about her new show, Joni Loves Chachi. That's the burning question. Does Joni still love Chachi? And Misa Kincaid, our on-the-scene reporter, interviewed Chuck Mangione several weeks ago about his music, his career, and who knows, maybe even his hat. <laughs> hey, and you know, Steve and Sharon, Steve we're going to be Sharon. back tomorrow. We're, we're losing a job here, but we go back to Eyewitness News and work hard. I was it's been say, fun. Thanks a lot for helping fun. me out. I wonder who's watching the shop and Eyewitness News right now. Thank you so much for, for allowing us to come into your home. Steve and Sharon will be back tomorrow, and a very special thanks to the good company staffers because they've been a big help to me. Good afternoon. Thanks now. Bye-bye. Then Johnsonville made smoke broths, delicately seasoned.